Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Service Without Excuses podcast. I have a very special guest on tonight. Um, he also, like a, one of my past guests, has a, a past history with the world's greatest experience company, Disney. That's at least my opinion onto it, but I feel it is. And many of uh, the people that uh, I know feel the same way. Uh, Vance spent 10 years working for the mouse at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. He was on the opening team of the Yacht Beach Club Resorts and the nightclub manager at Pleasure Oh my God, Pleasure Island. <laughs> Service trainer aboard the Express Lily and the revitalization team of the Contemporary Resort. At the Contemporary, Vance got his crowning achievement designing, opening, and operating Chef Mickey's, Disney's flagship character and dining experience. After leaving Disney, yes, surprisingly, some people do. I met another one. He utilized his skills to rescue and improve many of America's companies and government agencies. His clients include Legal Seafood, which is incredible. I love it. Boston-based company. NASA, uh, Rainforest Cafe, Compass Group, and the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. That's in New York City, I believe. Um, and Gotcha. Tired of corporate life and two layoffs, Vance opened his own bricks and mortar business in 2007 after meteoric growth and success of his service business. Other entrepreneurs began to seek him out for advice and counsel. Vance has shared the stage with the legendary Dan Kennedy, Lou Ferrigno, Joe Theismann, Dave D, and Penn Jillette, just to name a few. So what's going on, my friend? Good to be here. Good to be here. And a fellow, uh, fellow Jersey guy. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit down the road. We're about... From where you grew up, eh, 45 minutes or so, I'd say at yeah. the most. Yeah, I'm up there. Mom's still up there, so we get up. Uh, we get up there. Yeah, had a lot of, lot of, lot of fun summers in Wildwood. Oh yeah, me too. More as a musician than anything. I went there as a kid, and then as a musician. That's an experience all together. But tonight we're going to talk about the ultimate experience. Vance has a company called Deliver Service. Now he is an expert in the greatest extent of the word when it comes to experience. He, he uh, cut his teeth with Disney. And then, uh, and I just mentioned some of the resorts and things, Pleasure Island. I do remember that very well. I, I, I just, I was listening to your podcast and realized that's not open anymore. It's probably a good thing for that. That probably wasn't the most, <laughs> uh, I just, I, I remember some of those things. I went, oh boy, uh, not really a Disney type thing. But again, Vance is going to talk about um, delivering exceptional service, something our podcast is really based about the Service Without Excuses podcast. And Vance, welcome. Please tell our guests a little bit more about yourself than I already mentioned on the bio. Sure, man. Uh, again, Rob, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I think, you know, my, my mantra has been for the last 10 years or so, especially when it comes to creating experiences for, uh, you know, for clients or for my clients to create experiences for their clients is if a carpet cleaner can disnify their business, anybody can disnify their business. Um, I mean, I've been doing this now 15 years, own the carpet cleaning business, that is. Um, and, you know, I've come to realize that carpet cleaners are not exactly really high up on that uh, uh, home service totem pole. Um, you know, you kind of have electricians and plumbers you know, the pest control guys here, and a lot of times carpet cleaners are, you know, just a tick below pest control. Um, not saying that to get anybody's panties in a wad, but yeah, unfortunately, I mean, 2020 did an expose on um, on carpet cleaners back in the 90s, if you remember the old Joe Polish 2020 mm -hmm. um, interview. So, I mean, you know, we do steal the money from under seat cushions and drink out of the milk container in the refrigerator. I don't do it, but you know, it has cameras have proven otherwise, but it is so easy because the bar is set so low for anybody, anybody to deliver an incredible experience because the bar is set so low, you know, people now these days, they're expecting mediocre or smarmy service. I mean, the, the expectation level is not very high. So when you come in as a home service business, uh, you know, carpet cleaner, electrician, pest control, whatever, but again, the bar is set so low to create an experience for somebody is it's just drop dead easy. The funny thing is, this isn't funny, ha ha, this is like funny, really, is that your competitors are either too lazy or too dumb to do it. Like the guys who work around me, uh, my competitors, I've found them hiding in the bushes, watching my technicians go and, you know, enter the home. I 
they, they, they know what I do for marketing. They know what I do to create experiences. Yet not a one has copied it. And I, I don't get it. You know, oh, I do. So, so no matter what I tell you, even if all of my competitors are listening to your podcast right now, I'm going to tell them everything I do. And I guarantee you, nobody's going to copy it. So, you know what it comes, it comes down to? They can't. They could try, but they can't meet what you're doing, the level of commitment. Because the nice thing about experience is you could change the experience. The experience is ever evolving. It always grows into something else. It always changes into something. It morphs into something else. Right. And if you're willing to, um, if you actually want to try and copy that, good. Maybe you'll raise the bar for everybody. But in the, in the and that's really been my experience. Some of our biggest problems in the industry has been the low bar guys that just set it so low. Like you explained the first place, they bring us all down to the pit with them, and we we now have to fight our way clawing back out um, to bring it back to the much better level than it should be. But right. the experience is experience with you. I mean, I'm writing a book right now, and it's about reviews, and they're called the Review Society. Welcome to the Review Society. And it's essentially about you know people writing about you and basically a blog about you and your your, their experience with you, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so it's very tough for when they say, hey, I had Tim, I had Joe, I had Rob, whatever that is out there. You can't really copy Tim, Joe, and Rob. You can make up your own name, but then you've got to have a whole different piece of content and information and different different uh, way of presenting it than you or I would have. Right. And that's not matchable, man. I, I've I, I've seen that over over years. It's not um, maybe a quick story. I'll come right back to it. I'm yeah, man, go ahead. I wrote a blog last night about this. You're from New Jersey. That's why I'm bringing it up. It's in Point Pleasant <laughs> down here. Place has been there a long time called Spanos. And I put the blog out today. It's legendary. Now I have not been there. I've wanted to go there for about a good year. We never went. Well, last night we went. And if you've ever been to New York and you're an old school New Yorker, and I lived in New York, that feeling where the chef or the cook comes out or the owner comes out and greets everybody gets to know them finds out what their likes are this gentleman wasn't a master of of figuring you out right down to and i said it before to i have billy aiden on here before and uh the guy gave us a piece of uh bread with some uh, all kinds of seasonings and stuff on it and it was amazing and uh karen goes Shh, don't say anything my wife said don't say anything he's he thinks we've been here before i'm like he knows damn well we have never walked in this door before because he knows everybody in here he knows the transaction he knows your likes he knows your dislikes he knows your family he knows the whole thing now realistically i don't know how one person he has a lot of customers um his reviews are low they're all incredible but they're very low for him it doesn't matter because the service is so good he's been around for 30 years um, likelihood it's going to go to his son is God willing, he doesn't make any rest drastic changes to the South. That business will succeed for a very long time and remain the staple it is. Um, but most companies do not have that option. They don't have that, that, uh, that uh, I'm more, I think I'm trying to think of the word for it, that, uh, that build up, that credibility that he has. Well, you know, when I work with companies, uh, my clients, um, for the, uh, the Disney business, you know, a lot of the questions I get are, are one of disbelief. It's like, well, I have nothing to do with Disney. I don't own a theme park. I don't own a roller coaster. I don't have characters. What on earth could Disney teach a carpet cleaner about their business? And we have more in common with Disney than you really think. Um, if you break it down to the bare bones, we both have customers, both have employees, uh, we both have cost pressures. We both have vendors. Uh, you know, we both have online reviews. I mean, and on and on and on. So there are a lot of similarities between Disney as a business and, and your business. One of the key things, though, is to try to figure out not how to copy what Disney's doing, but to adapt what Disney does into your niche or profession. I'll give you an example. Um, in my world, um, I've coined the phrase called Disneyfy, and what that means is to create experiences out of the mundane. And very similar to your restaurant uh, experience, you know, where the owner greets you at the door, he's got the bread and the olive oil, and you know, he's you know making a big show. What? How many other restaurants have you been to where nobody does that? Right. You know, this guy has automatically separated himself. Um, and so, you know, if you look at the carpet cleaning business or service business, one of the mundane things we have to do is get into 
the person's home. Because we can't get in, we can't, can't do our service. So we've created an experience out of getting into the person's home. Um, you know, the short version of it is, you know, my technician arrives, he parks in the street, he doesn't park in the driveway because God forbid he's got a, you know, an oil leak or something, then I got to clean the driveway. He goes up to the front door, he's in a clean uniform, um, he carries a second uniform with him in case he gets it dirty on the first job. He's got a special mat, he's got his tool bag, and he's got a little box, uh, which is a, actually a little gift. Gets up to the front door, knocks on the door, says, uh, waits for Mrs. McGillicuddy to answer. He takes a step back, even pre-COVID, we were taking that step or two back because there is nothing worse than having some six foot tall burly guy with his nose, you know, pressed up against your screen, um, you know, demanding to be let in. So we wait for Mrs. McGillicuddy to answer the door. We say, hi, my name is Stephen. I'm here to take care of you today. May I come in? And then he does an exaggerated wiping of his feet on the special mat that we just laid down. It's nothing, you know, you can get them anywhere. It's a logoed mat for my carpet business. Um, and then even after he wipes his feet, he puts on booties. Now he's been invited in and he gives the client a gift. Now, this is not a, you know, a magnet for the refrigerator or some kind of tchotchke, you know, that you get, uh, you know, from, you know, pens and crap like that. This is a real true gift. It comes in a little blue box and inside the box is a bottle of spot remover, a bag of cookies and a little note from me, the owner saying, hey, thank you very much for allowing us into your home. Uh, if you have any questions, here's my personal cell phone number. Feel free uh, to give us a call. Now, giving a gift, when was the last time anybody came to your house to work on your washing machine, do your pest control, uh, you know, work on your yard? Any of those guys give you a gift? Not one. Before the, and I'm talking before the service. Right. I mean, a lot of my competitors will, yeah, they'll leave a bottle of spot remover behind. Uh, you know, it's kind of nice, but that's just part of the service. We're given the gift beforehand. Now that gift does a couple of things. First, it separates me from everybody else out there because there ain't nobody else doing it. Um, and think about it. If you're going to somebody's house uh, for a party, you're going over to a friend's house, you know, you, you want her for dinner or a party or something, you usually bring something, a bottle of wine, some more d'oeuvres, six pack of beer, something to share with the host. But well, we're doing the same thing. We're bringing a gift to the host or hostess of the house. Not only, again, does it separate us, but it begins a process called reciprocity. Um, and so the guest or our client, when it comes time for us to do our sales presentation, they feel compelled to give something back to us. See, we gave them something ahead of time. They feel compelled to give something back. When we implemented this gift box, and it was the only thing we changed at the time, when we implemented the gift box, our mid-tier package went up by 26%. So we have a basic cleaning, a stain fighter, and a healthy home. You know, I'm sure same, you know, gold, bronze, silver, et cetera. Our mid-tier package went up 26%. Wow. For one year, that's an additional $65,000 in sales that we didn't have before. That's amazing. That's absolutely so, amazing. I mean, it really is just how easy it is. Just by changing the the tooling process from the from the back end to the front end, now you're you're already coming in with a great expectation. You're already coming in with the shoe covers. You're coming in with the stuff, and you're coming in with a personalized gift that's personalized for them, and makes it unique. One of the things that stood out, and I'm listening to you talk, and I saw on your presentation about how they painted a statue every night. <laughs> uh, you know, I and I tried to ask that to, and obviously we can't paint our trucks, but we sure can clean them. I mean, on a national chain standpoint, I ran a Stanley steamer for a number of years. And if you didn't wash your truck inside and out by the day, the next day, you got pretty much got the, the crappiest route on the, on the thing because it was just par for the course. If you're too lazy to do it, listen, it doesn't take that long. Usually you had two people on a truck, clean it up. It doesn't have to look great, but it's got to look much better than what it does. Yep. So it was a requirement to wash your truck. They paint this thing. They shut down overnight and have it painted. I think this was through a, a fair or something in particular, some event, but they did this ongoing, like repainted it every night, which is insane in the first place to think somebody would go that far, but you will go that far. The example to us is making sure we have clean uniforms, clean trucks, well-spoken employees, detailed, shaved, groomed completely, uh, possibly the shirts tucked in. I would say that's a good uh, mantra. <laughs> I know that changes a little bit with styles, but you work for our company, unless it's 100 degrees outside, that stuff stays tucked in. It's just looking yeah. professional, clean cut. 
Um, the companies I ran, it was the same, same scenario. So we wear shorts, but we'll still keep <laughs> the shirts tucked in to yep. be professional as much as possible. So the presentation is a lot, as you just explained. Well, and don't forget, you know, I mean, that whole thing about painting that post every night, that's a level of attention to detail that Disney does with everything. And again, that's something that you can adapt to your business. I mean, cleaning, this is a detailed business. So, I mean, if you show up, you know, in a, in a junky, you know, pickup truck with a shop vac and a garden hose in the back, well, you know, you're not saying much for yourself. You're obviously not going to be a detail oriented person, but if you show up to the front door, as you said, you know, in a uniform that's actually tucked in, um, only time we don't actually in the summertime, we do something cool. We, uh, we wear Hawaiian shirts. Uh, oh, so wow. I've got logoed Hawaiian shirts for the guys to wear um, in the summer. And, you know, it's a little fun. They don't have to tuck those in because those look silly when you tuck them in. But yeah, still, it's a lot of, you know, you add a little bit of fun to the guy's job. Um, you made, yeah, made me think of Trader Joe's right there. Yeah. Oh, God. Trader yeah. Joe's is phenomenal. They're, they're super smart in their marketing. Super smart. Yeah, it's 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 I mean, it is it's just thinking outside the box, like you said, the president at a time, the clean cut, the uniform, the communication level in the first place. Um, I don't, I'm sure you're this way just by the limited amount that I, that I did my research on, but I am a systems junkie. So everything is a system. A review is a system. It's going to the door is a system. Now, I don't like over redundant things that never get done that are just a giant pain in the butt and you can't duplicate, but simple systems that get done every single day in every situation, create this thing called consistency. If you know anything about Disney, they are the kings of consistency, period. There's other companies out there, McDonald's, Burger King, they all do a good job. But at some point, you're not going to have the same meal at McDonald's or Burger King that you had, even though it might be the same sort of flavor. Your experience will be not be the same. Your experience every single time from what the times I've been there and people that I respect their opinions, and I'm sure you could probably agree with this, your experience is as good or not better than what you expected in the first place. Yeah, and it has to be. And systems, you, you hit it right on the head. I mean, systems have to be simple uh, because they they won't happen if they're not simple. Disney has very simple systems to run its theme parks, to run its restaurants, to run its resorts. Because think about who's working there. I mean, it's the same labor pool that we all have around the rest of the country. You know, it's a bunch of, you know, teenagers. A lot of it is entry level jobs. And if it was something difficult, I mean, if it was one of those decision trees and it's got branches going all over it, um, nothing would ever get done. I mean, Disney is run on three words, what to do, how to do it. And why we do it. That's it. Yeah, it's That's simple. It. And, and, you know, I mean, and you're right with the McDonald's example. I mean, they have got systems down. You know, where else in the world can you go and, you know, have the Big Mac taste the same in Boise, Idaho, as it does in Salt Lake City um, and have a whole bunch of prepubescent, you know, pimply teenagers putting this stuff out there. If you didn't have a good system, I mean, it would, it would be a disaster. Absolutely. Absolutely. What are some of the lessons you think, I mean, you've obviously taken the world of Disney and brought it into the service business. In particular, a lot of people listen to this are in the restoration industry, are in the cleaning industry, some are in the plumbing HVAC, but all very similar. Just we do a little bit, something a little bit different, obviously. I'm not going to come in and plumb your house. I'm not going to come in and put an air handler in your house, even though I understand it. I'm not going to clean your ductwork myself, even though I understand it. We all have our own little uh, niches on what we do, but what are some experiences that you have found, obviously with your vast, incredible experience um, that you have brought into the this type of service business that is beneficial probably for our listeners? Let's just say they're, you know, maybe they got one truck, they're getting going, they're just ready to really climb, especially right now coming out of this. Some have been challenged with it. I know I have from a certain degree, um, but you know, we, we've still, we still, we're, our numbers were still up by 20%, no matter what, at the end of the year. So yeah. it was called diversification and, 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 you know, and building up that ticket, so to speak. But um, what's some of the advice you think you could give to somebody right in that area? Well, you know, certainly not taking your foot off the gas. I mean, you know, during this last 12 months, uh, you know, there were, there's one of two, two kinds of people out there. Uh, people that went and hit under a rock and thought the world was coming to an end and said, ah, I'm not doing anything, you know, um, stop marketing, uh, you know, just saved every penny they could. And then there were the guys or gals who are out there and just, you know what, let's put the pedal to the metal, 
keep the gas going on the marketing and let's do it. I mean, similar to everybody, I'm sure. I mean, I had my worst March and April in the history of my company last year. Um, but by the time May rolled around, I mean, it was off the charts. Um, and the rest of the year made up for, you know, and I did, I ended the year up similar to you. Yeah, we, we knew commercial was going to be down. We knew this wasn't going to go away soon. So our commercial, we ended up closing the year commercially pretty even because we got some bigger jobs at the end, but we diversified. For instance, uh, last year, not this this past summer, summer before, we did a couple paver cleanings. Now, pavers, as you know, are pretty big here in New Jersey, a lot of sand, a lot of stuff. So a friend of mine said, hey, I can refer you some paver jobs every once in a while. So the previous year, he referred me a couple and I got used to doing it, went out as, you know, learn the trade from somebody. And then the second year, not only did I have the referrals from him, but I had the fact that people were going to be home this year more often. They were not going to go out for the summertime. Plus, we had the previous customers and their friends saying, you got to see the work they do. you got to see the quality of detail they go to. So diversification was a big thing for us. We decided, you know what, there's very few things we can control. But what we can control is making sure we have enough options on the table in order to keep everybody working the best we possibly can. All right. Uh, and that's business. You got to learn to do it. I mean, I'm sure companies like Disney have taken hits on things and they just rebound and, and re rediscover. They don't take their foot off the gas. Same thing with SEO. I had a, I just started a brand new SEO campaign last year in February. Now, in our business, February is a very slow month. And then March hit and, well, we know the rest of the answer. What do I do at that point? Take my foot off the gas, like you said, just I already put a couple thousand dollars out. I'm going to spend $600 a month minimum on my SEO campaigns. Do I pull it off? Do I stop doing it? it doesn't do any good. I already spent the money and, and it's going to take five to six months to really take effect anyway. So by that point in time, we'll be in the summertime and God willing, it'll work. And it did. And I, I'm glad I'm not a person that puts the put on the brakes for the most part. In fact, I subscribe to more um, stuff this past year and invested in more educational things this year than I have ever um, it, since I've been here in New Jersey. So, you know, I mean, you, you, you get the opportunities. And when you have time where you're not super slammed and you're going, okay, things have come up against me and I'm not as busy, that's a time to redirect and reflect and go, okay, where are we going to reposition assets? Where are we going to put this? Where are we going to put this? You know, you, 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 again, you know, not that you're stealing my thunder, but man, you hit the nail on the head uh, with, you know, diversification. Um, you know, my mentor, Dan Kennedy says, oh. one is the worst number in business. You know, because if you just rely on one revenue stream or you rely on one, uh, you know, really large client, if that client or that revenue stream goes away, you're, you're in deep doo-doo. So, I mean, similar to you, I start last year, I started mold remediation, added that to the mix. Um, you know, if you look at Disney, yeah, I mean, they still haven't gotten the, uh, the cruise lines are not reopened. Half of their theme parks are still closed. Uh, the theme park in Orlando is only operating at 35% capacity, but boy, have they made a bundle on that Disney plus thing. You know, uh, I mean, and that is what is carrying the company right now. Um, is their uh, not cable channel. Um, what do you I, even call that thing? Satellite I, channel? I believe it's a streaming service. Streaming service. There yeah, yeah. I actually have it because I, I got up, we, we loaded it and we got Disney because we, we have, you know, my wife has a big family and a number of them are younger. So every child loves, and every adult, by the way, loves Disney. Um, so we got it. And yeah, it's a streaming service that you can subscribe to. So that's what we did. We subscribed to it. And uh, I mean, that's the wave of the future, frankly. That's just like podcasting right now. I would have never thought somebody in Hungary or Switzerland was going to send me an email on how much they got out of it and what do I do and impact. You'd never think that you'd get all these downloads that this would go this this far out there. But content is content. Information is information. Uh, business lessons are business lessons. There are some few changes throughout the world, but I could tell you there's a gentleman or a woman in New, in uh, Germany that has the same business experience that somebody in the United States has. I can, I can okay. tell you for a fact. So molding and, and changing and adapting, like you just said, you did with mold remediation. I did with paver cleaning and Disney did with going into a streaming service are all parts of having that diversification. Diversification is smartly, smart diversification. You don't want to be a handyman, plumber, carpet cleaner, mold uh -huh. remediation. Yeah. You can't be a jack of all trades. My father used to call it a jackass of all trades. And it really is when you do too many things, 
I mean, listen, pick to what you're really good at in your profit centers. And that's where 80% of your money's coming in. We all know the old Pareto principle. Yep. You know, you got to re really refine where you're making money. If you're if you're building a house, chances are carpet cleaning is not probably a profit center. If it is, you might want to restructure your 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 costs of building a house because you should have a much higher profit margin. Yes, your margins might be narrow, but your numbers should be considerably higher than that of cleaning a carpet in Mr. and Mrs. Smith's house, in my opinion. So, um, what else? Uh, what else can I really think of to ask of you at this point in time? Because we're just about there at the very end. I'm trying to think of some final notes and some things and lessons that you think service business professionals like yourself, again, you have a unique perspective because you haven't just done that. You've, you've run successfully service businesses. So you're integrating the, most, the world's greatest experience with a service business. What is some advice you think before we wrap up here that you feel our uh, guests and those that listen to this and will listen to this can get from you? Sure. You know, I think the big thing is really looking at your business and trying to figure out how you can get your clients or your customers at the end of an experience with you for them to say to their friends and neighbors, you'll never guess what happened today at insert your profession. You'll never guess what happened with the carpet cleaner today. You know, when was the last time you had that question around the dinner table? You know, did you have you ever gone to your wife and said, honey, you'll never guess what happened at the oil change today? You know, most likely nothing. Um, but if you can get your um, clients and your patients at the end of the day to say, hey, mate, you'll never guess what happened with the carpet cleaner today. He showed up, he gave me a gift. I've never had anybody show up at my front door with a gift. You know, even my mother doesn't bring a gift. Um, so, you know, coming up with ways for you to have your clients saying those kinds of things. You'll never guess what happened with an insert your profession because that's the kind of stuff that's going to get your referrals going. That's the kind of stuff that's going to get your word of mouth. And that is definitely the kind of stuff that is going to generate more and more reviews on pretty much any platform. A hundred percent. And I can think of showing up is, is, is I love the, the saying, the old saying, showing up is half the battle. It's not a battle. You've shown up. That's not enough. I mean, everybody it shows up. And if you don't show up, you don't have any right to be in the market space. So showing up is, is, is nothing. That's just a bare essential to do it. It's where you take that experience from that standpoint. I have to pull this up because we're on the oh. phone. You talked about it. You know, these very, very well. Oh yeah. <laughs> these are the two most recent sets of newsletters that I am still pulling out. Now these are pretty old. These are not, these are like probably 2010, 2011, but I've got a whole thing down here of all the newsletters and all the years. I, I, I wasn't nearly as involved as you, but my God, did when I heard his name mentioned to me and I started doing the research, yeah, that's life. That's just changing because it told, I didn't even understand what direct response marketing was. I, I knew Joe polished it stuff. I actually learned it more from Dan Kenny before I learned who Joe even was. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of valuable lessons there uh, from, from that different style of marketing because it's accountability. So Vance, tell our listeners, the ones both watching and listening, how they can get in touch with you. What's the best way to find you? I know I have your website here, but please uh, feel free to tell them exactly. Yeah, that's really, I mean, the website really is the best way. Um, you know, I've got a, a great little blueprint um, on there. Uh, the website is deliverservicenow.com and you can download, it's essentially the cliff notes to my book, uh, Systematic Magic. And you can take this blueprint at literally, I mean, it's a five minute read, and take that and start implementing things in your business right away. Um, it's, there's no fluff in there or anything like that. I mean, it's just, here's some actionable items that you can take and implement if you're a dentist, a, you know, what a phlebotomist, a carpet cleaner, whatever you are, you can take these examples and implement them. So um, that would be the, the best thing, especially if you wanna actually do something, you know, that's. A lot of the trouble I have at the end of a podcast or end of an interview is, you know, are your guests, are your listeners going to do something? Um, and so that's why, you know, the, uh, the free uh, gift that I have there, that blueprint um, is so easy to use because I want people to use it. Um, and I want people to 
increase their level of the experience, incre increase your income at the same time. So yeah, deliverservicenow.com be the best place. You know, I got to quote the great Brian Tracy on this. You should learn tidbits of information like this because in your entire life, you couldn't absorb 10% of what it, what's out there, even if you study it every day till the day you leave this earth. So the information you're going to learn from people like Vance and other guests that we've had on here is invaluable and can help you. One of the things, reasons I really recommend Vance above it all, because I know he's been doing it a long time. He's got the experience to do it. And he was known as the Disney guy in the GKIC world and the Dan Kennedy world. And that, I mean... I knew of you as a, like a legendary guy because you had a specific set of gifts that other people just don't have. So his, his knowledge and background in it is something you should definitely look into. I'll make sure they're on the show notes. I'll make sure the links are on here. Um, again, please reach out to Vance and uh, take advantage of that report. You'll definitely, uh, it'll definitely transform your thought process. No question about that. Vance, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate your time today and look thank forward you, to having Rob. you on again at some point. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. You too, sir. Thank you. Have a good day.